What is going on? Greetings of peace. I'm gonna jump straight into it. I bear witness there's no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger. Now, the point of this video is to talk about the double standards and hypocrisies I've seen by some, again, I'm not saying all non-Muslims in this video. I'm saying by some non-Muslims. Now, there's this uh, person who's not an expert on Islam. He has a talk show host and he seems to bring on guests and... They love talking about Islam and they spread lies and they have double standards. In this video, I'm going to focus on their double standards. So there's this guy by the name of Dave Rubin and he had some guests on like Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro. And also another guy named Charlie Kirk. Again, these people were talking about Islam. Everything they say, I'm going to debunk. And I'm going to show you their double standards. Again, what they were saying was ridiculous. And uh, one thing I've noticed... There's this park in Britain, maybe some of you guys know about it, it's called Hyde Park. People go there and they debate the non-Muslims, whether they be the Hindus, the Sikhs, the Buddhists, the Atheists, the Christians, the Catholics, Evangelicals, all of them, um, or the Shias and stuff. All these groups of people, they come and they always try to debate the Muslims and they always lose in the debate, it's hilarious. So all these group of people who hate each other, they can't stand each other. They always like to team up against the truth, which is Islam, and they always get owned because when it's truth versus falsehood, by its nature, falsehood is bound to perish, and that's what's been happening. But in this video, I'm going to expose their, uh, their hypocrisy. So take a look at these clips. This group, well, how is membership defined? Well, let's say it's, mem it's defined by ethnicity, something like mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. which would be related to the descent through the mother. It's like, well, that's a problem. I'm not saying right. it's wrong. I'm saying it's a problem no, it, it because is, it, it is demarcates a, a group. You say, mm -hmm. well, this is a group that only we can belong to. But what's weird is you can convert in. Mm -hmm. right? So, right, so, so right. This, this, is the, when, this is why I say when there's play in the joints, mm -hmm. a lot of the problems are solvable through the idea that you can convert in. Mm -hmm. So Judaism says you can't convert out, but then we don't punish people who leave, right? But is it, right. But, uh, which right. is different than Islam. Yes. Um, but the, yes, it's actually a relatively yeah. important. Thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's right. Point out. Um, yeah. but, so, um, Again, you saw that clip that was from the Dave Rubin show and we see his guest ignorance. He had a, a Christian on by the name of Jordan Peterson, again, who's a joke. And he had another joke drawn by the name of Ben Shapiro. And you clearly saw Ben Shapiro saying that in Judaism, apostates don't have capital punishment or uh, death for leaving the religion. And you also had Jordan Peterson agreeing with it again. One's a Christian and he claims he, he, he supposedly have read the whole Bible so you would know what it says in the Old Testament about this when it comes to Judaism. And then one's a Jew, you would think he would know his own Torah. But again, here's the Muslim coming and teaching them their own book. It's sad. Muslims know the Bible better than the Christians and Jews know it. But again, um, let me show you their double standards and hypocrisy. So here we go. What is the punishment for apostasy? If you go to Deuteronomy chapter 13 verses 6 to 9, watch this. If your very own brother or your son or daughter or the wife you love or your closet friend secretly entices you, saying, Let us go and worship other gods, gods that neither you nor your fathers have known, gods of the peoples around you, peoples around you, whether near or far, from, from one far uh, near or far, from one end of the land to the other, or gods of other religions, do not yield to him or listen to him. Now watch this. Show him no pity. It's a show him no pity. Do not spare him or shield him. You must certainly put him to death. So if someone changes their religion according to the Torah, there you go. Your hand must be the first in putting him to death and then the hands of all the people. So your hand must be the first one. Um, now let's look at a, another verse. Deuteronomy chapter 17 verses 3 to 5. And he should go and worship other gods and bow down to... Uh, oh wait, let me see. Oh yeah, and he should go and worship other gods and bow down to them, or to the sun, or the moon, or all the army of the heavens. Fast forward a little, and you must stone such one with stones, and such one must die. And here, Second Chronicles chapter fifteen, verse thirteen: All who do not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, were to be put to death, whether small or great, man or woman. So again, uh, we see the hypocrisy of 
and the double standards of their propaganda whenever they talk about Islam. But take a look at the next clip. But I mean, and one of the people who I work with at, at my company, Andrew Clavin, is a guy who was born Jewish and now is Christian. Yeah. Right. So in my view, he's Jewish. But am I going to like drag him down to my synagogue? Like that's not a thing. Right. Uh, right. So it's. it's uh, their Ben Shapiro asked a rhetorical question. He said one of his friends changed his religion and he's not going to implement what it says in the Old Testament. Uh, okay. Well, to answer his question, he probably won't do it. His Old Testament also says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 16, don't bear false witness. And this guy always lies. So again, we see him. They like to pick and choose what they want to follow. He likes to spew out lies and propaganda too. Right. So Islam as its core, at its core has always been and will always be tied into the state. And as soon as they can demonstrate that they can be a majority in a country and not be a theocratic government, then I'll start to cede some territory against that. See here, he said that if Islam is a majority in a country, first of all, Islam is an ideology. What he meant to say was Muslims in a majority of a country. Well, sadly, there are Muslim majority countries that uh, don't follow uh, the Quran and Sunnah, sadly. But some examples uh, where they have uh, secularism or democracy or whatever you want to call it would be Turkey. There's one. Um, Indonesia, there's another one. So again, uh, you've been debunked, so don't repeat this talking point. Let's see his next clip. So for example, Saudi Arabia, right? So if you are a Christian in Saudi Arabia, you lose your head. If you're a Jew, they'll find your family and kill all of you. That's There's something wrong about that. So he said that if you're a Christian in Saudi Arabia or Jew, the government will kill you and they'll come after your entire family. Uh, again, we see... Um, another Republican or right-wing lie or maybe one of these Judeo-Christian lies where they try to bash uh, Muslims and stuff. But again, remember, Islam is perfect and Muslims are not. So if they ever bring up examples of Muslims doing something, if a Muslim's drinking alcohol, that doesn't mean you're allowed to do it in Islam. So remember that and reflect upon that. But again, we saw his ridiculous lie. Take a look at the next clip. Right. So I think we need to draw a great critique of that same in Iran, which is Shia and Saudi, um, which is Sunni. And th there's something really, I think, not correct about in modern society that you have obviously a Muslim majority country and, you know, there's no Christians and no Jews and no churches and no synagogues. There's something very intolerant about that. And we see this kid lying again, Charlie Kirk. He's another jokester. This is why when I listen to people like him or Jordan Peterson or Ben Shapiro or Alex Jones, I have to literally, uh, I literally cringe at their lies and stupidity that's so easy to debunk. So he just said in Saudi Arabia and Iran, there's no Jews or Christians. A simple Google search and you'll see there are Christians and Jews that live there. So again, we see more lies. Either he must be stupid or he's been brainwashed or he's purposely lying. Or he's not sincere. Could be a combination of this too. But again, take a look at the next clip. See fit and not have to wear a full hijab. I want those Muslims to succeed. So uh, there you go. You see Charlie Kirk uh, trying to bash the hijab and saying uh, he's trying to connotate as if it's a bad thing. But he calls himself a Christian. If you go to First Corinthians chapter eleven verse six, it says, "If a woman does not cover her head, she should have." Her hair cut off, and if it's uh, and if it is a disgrace for a woman to have her hair cut off or shaved off, she should cover her head. So again, her own or his own book preaches it, and then all these alleged paintings of Mary, uh, in their churches and stuff, she's always wearing a hijab. So again, when we see Christians or Jews trying to mock the hijab and stuff, and they don't follow their own books, they're just showing double standards and hypocrisy. Uh, but again. Take a look at the next clip of what he's going to say. Yeah. I'm frightened that the more radical voices, which are in the tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions, are actually getting more, more of an audience. They're, they're, they're creating, you know, sectors of Europe that are quite troubling, that are advocating for the advancement of these more dangerous ideologies that support honor killings and don't. Um, and again, uh, we see him trying to insinuate that there's honor killings in Islam. Again, Islam is perfect, Muslims are not. And in Islam, there's no such thing as honor killings, but it is there in the Bible. Exodus chapter 21, verse 17. It says, anyone who dishonors father or mother must be put to death. So that's what his own Bible says. So again, um, 
There's honor killings in his book, but he's claiming it's an Islam. And he's also trying to insinuate it's immoral, so then why do you follow a religion that teaches that? Again, we see your hypocrisy and it is being exposed. But again, let me show you some other verses. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 9, And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profaneth her father. She shall be burnt with fire. This is what their book says. So again, she's in this context that the daughter is this, um, dishonoring her father. That and she should be burnt to death with fire. That's honor killing. That's there in their Bible. And like I said, Exodus twenty one seventeen. And he that cursed his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. And here's another verse, Leviticus chapter twenty verse nine. For every one that cursed his fa father or his mother shall be surely put to death. He hath cursed. His father or mother, his blood shall be upon him. So again, you cursed your parents, you dishonored them. There's honor killing in his book, but then he's claiming that exists in Islam. Again, I challenge you, bring me one verse, you can't do it. So again, uh, we see his hypocrisy being exposed, and he's not educated. He thinks he is, he's really not. He's not an expert. He's just spewing out propaganda he's been brainwashed with. But let's take a look at the next clip. Um, I would consider myself more as a conservatarian, which I find to be a new breed of, you know, ideology, which you and I talked about, and some people have already been labeling themselves as such. And I, I find no contradiction between my Christian worldview and my political philosophy. In fact, I find a um, great amount of, you know, synchrony, actually, between what I find, what I believe theologically and what I believe spiritually and religiously um, to also what I advocate for politically. We see him saying his theological views match up with his political views and there is no contradictions, even though there is. He claims to support free speech, even though a lot of Zionist organizations or right-wing organizations or even some left-wing organizations or Judeo-Christian organizations uh, kick off or try to censor Palestinian activists who come and speak the truth and expose uh, Israel's war crimes off college campuses. But on top of that, um, real quick, their scripture has blasphemy laws, but he's for free speech. I don't know if he's for uh, same-sex marriage or not, but that would contradict his beliefs if he were. Because I know, supposedly, Donald Trump, when he rallied, he said he was for uh, LGBTQ rights. So again, um, I don't know if he supports that or not. But again, reflect upon that, and I'm going to play you the next clip. He says is there's Moses level prophecy, which is the, the legislating prophet, which is and he says he's the only legislating prophet in, in the Jewish view. But so when you see a guy like Shapiro or a guy like Prager, Prager's more they're, they're my Prager, heroes. Prager, I love them. Prager basically is secular Jew at this point, but grew up Orthodox. Shapiro obviously is an observant is religious, observant yeah. Orthodox Jew. You got look. I think we need more Jews to actually become more observant and to understand the roots of the Torah and the roots of what God commanded through Moses and through David and the, the major and minor prophets. And I have such great respect for them because... So you heard him there, he said, uh, this Charlie Kirk character says he wants Jews to be more observant. So let's say the state of Israel, which is a Jewish majority country, starts implementing uh, Judaic law, uh, laws from the Old Testament. And let's say they... Uh, uh, past laws like uh, blasphemy laws or apostasy laws would this guy support it or will he not again he likes to uh, cherry pick and stuff but what if another religion does something similar would he support that or would he have double standards so again if something is in their scripture x y and z and it's also in another scripture x y and z he will not follow it in his own scripture and then at the same time attack the other scripture because he has double standards and it's hypocrisy and he likes to cherry pick and he's not even a true follower of his own faith or a lot of these people who claim they're uh, from a certain faith. They don't even practice their own religion. They pick and choose and um, they take certain parts of their books and they ignore other parts. Again, reflect upon that and I'm going to play his next clip. Oh yeah, and real quick also, I'm going to put a link in the description. Um, it's going to be a video of some Jewish rabbi or he claims to be a rabbi but anyway he uh, goes and speaks at an EDL rally and he starts uh, trying to attack Islam and says Islam allows this this and this even though the same thing is in his own Torah so a Muslim guy comes and confronts him and the Jewish rabbi gets owned he doesn't know what to do I'm gonna put a link of that because his hypocrisy and double standards got exposed take a look at the next clip
happening all across Europe. We know what's going on in Sweden. All this. Your basic premise would be that if they had held on to some of their Judeo-Christian values instead of trading them in for yes. uh, what, what do you think they secularism, them essentially yeah. statism, right? But yet, like, you, but yet you're also a secularist, which is an interesting. Well, no, but no, I don't think it's not. I don't think it's contradictory because yeah. I would make an argument that actually the separation of church and state found in America has helped the church. Mm -hmm. We still have the highest church-going rates rates in the West. We still have the highest levels of private philanthropy. We have more churches opening than ever before. The evangelical community is growing in most states. As Alan Dershowitz would say, the separation of church and state has been the best thing for the church uh, because it's not imposed upon people. It's not mandatory. Mm -hmm. As you and I both agree, when as soon as you start to tell someone to do something, it becomes a lot less sexy and appealing. Yeah. And actually, you want to rebel against it. You want to reject it. I would argue Europe, through their social welfare programs, have deteriorated the church. But as soon as they start to say government is going to take care of people, government is going to be the most important thing in your life, government's going to fix these vastly complex social problems, then all of a sudden the church and the individual becomes far less significant. As Dennis Prager says, the larger the government, the smaller the citizen. You're seeing that play out in France and Spain and Portugal and Italy, where you have individual philanthropy disappear, where you have business startups totally evaporate. And the final point is what it really lends itself to is more dangerous dangerous ideologies to take form, such as radical Islam, which is, I think, one of the most dangerous, widespread ideological movements happening in the West that no one is talking about. And here's what I can understand. I mean, you're, you're, you're a gay guy. I mean, I would probably be worried if I start to see, you know, radical Islam start to take root in Europe, right? Yeah. You're the, a Christian. I'd be worried, too. No, I mean, trust me. <laughs> I'm on that program, okay? They, yeah. they want us both dead, my friend, yeah. right? I mean, they, and that's something I find to be horribly inconsistent with the left is they try to be the champions of all these minority groups and all these supposed oppressed groups yet here they are kind of joining forces with countries and movements and you know theocratic fascists in the middle east that give homosexuals flying lessons on the top of buildings <laughs> all right uh, this next clip you guys already saw but it's a little longer so i'm going to be playing it and listening to it and rebuttaling it at the same time so here we go happening all across Europe, we know what's going on in Sweden and all this. Your basic premise would be that if they had held on to some of their Judeo-Christian values instead of trading them in for... Yes. Uh, what, what do you think? Secularism, essentially yeah. statism. So here we go, he's saying if they held on to some of their Judeo-Christian values. Again, he didn't say all, he said some. So like I said, a lot of these people who come in and they try to bash Islam and their uh missionaries and stuff and they claim to be feminists or for same-sex marriage and stuff they're going against their own scripture the same way they're trying to change their religion they're trying to change the truth which is islam and they'll fail and they'll never be able to but anyway um he's trying to morph two contradictory opinions let's hear to what he has to say Right, but, yet like, you, but yet you're also a secularist, which is an interesting. Well, no, but no, I don't think it's not. I don't think it's contradictory because yeah. I would make it. It is contradictory. Secularism means uh, a separation of religion and state, and then um, his religious views is there isn't a separation of religion and state. One is in secularism, or uh, for him, he'd be democracy. It's by the people, and then one is, uh, I guess. It would be defined in Western terms as a theocracy. It would mean by God. So one God decides, one maybe a person or the majority or something decides. So again, these are two contradictory opinions because maybe, um, like I said, God says same-sex marriage is not allowed. And here's a bunch of people coming and voting and saying it is allowed. So again, those two are contradictory opinions. But let's hear, to, uh, let's hear uh, his reasoning to what he has to say. Because again, uh, this is hypocrisy and double standards at its finest. An argument that actually the separation of church and state found in America has helped the church. Mm -hmm. We still have the highest church going rates, rates in the West. We still have the highest levels of private philanthropy. We have more churches opening than ever before. The evangelical community is growing. So he's saying uh, this has helped their churches again. Um, they're not allowed to have female pastors. They have female pastors. They're not allowed to do gay marriages. There are churches doing gay marriages. So they're picking and choosing and stuff. And also, uh, the, uh, what is it, the pedophilia that goes on in some of these churches and uh, sexual harassment and stuff, uh, just search it up. Uh, it's sad and it's disgusting. And how people try to cover for some of these pastors, again, I'm not saying all pastors, it's, just, uh, cer it's certain churches and stuff that do those bad stuff. But again, uh, let's listen to what he has to say about this. In 
most states. As Alan Dershowitz would say, the separation of church and state has been the best thing for the church. So it seems like he's claiming his religious belief earlier was um, doesn't contradict his political beliefs, and now he here he's kind of supporting separation of church and state, which goes against his religious beliefs. But let's keep listening. Uh, because it's not imposed upon people. It's not mandatory. Mm -hmm. As you and I both agree, when as soon as you start to tell someone to do something, it becomes a lot less sexy. And so if the Bible tells you to do X, Y, and Z, now you don't want to do it? If we're using this logic, his logic. Yeah. It actually, you want to rebel against it. You want to reject it. So um, he wants to rebel and reject against his own religion because that's his logic. If somebody tells you to do something, you don't want to do it. If it's good, you're going to do it. If it's bad, you're not going to do it. Oh, it are vastly complex social problems, then all of a sudden the church and the individual becomes far less significant. As Dennis Prager says, the larger the government, the smaller the citizen. You're seeing that play out in France. It doesn't matter how small or big the government is if your ideology is based on falsehood. Again, Islam is the truth, but he wants to reject it. Like I said, the problem of interest, slash usury, whatever you want to call it, or alcohol or pollution and stuff. Islam has a solution, but he wants to reject it. Let's keep listening to what he has to say and watch. He's about to show his true colors. And Spain and Portugal and Italy, where you have individual philanthropy disappear, where you have business startups totally evaporate. And the final point is what it really lends itself to is more dangerous ideologies to take form, such as radical Islam. Okay, so now he's trying to scare people and saying Europe is failing and now radical Islam is going to come and take over who? So uh, migrants coming over whose countries are being bombed? Really? 1% of the country or something like that? That This guy's being xenophobic and fear mongering. But let's keep listening to what he has to say. So again, um, real quick, this reminds me of the time where uh, people claimed... Barack Obama was a Muslim and he's implementing Sharia law, but at the same time they're calling Obama an atheist and uh, he's bringing communism into America. So at the same time, he passed gay marriage, which goes against the Islamic law, and they said at the same time he's passing Islamic law. So we see when they have contradictory opinions uh, or they have double think and their own ideology contradicts itself. This is kind of similar to, um, to that situation where what they're saying is just ridiculous and absurd, but He's fair mongering and stuff. Let's keep listening to what he has to say. Which is, I think, one of the most dangerous, widespread ideological movements happening in the West that no one is talking about. And here's what I can understand. I mean, you're, you're, you're a gay guy. I mean, I would probably be worried if I start to see, you know, radical Islam start to take root in Europe. Okay, so he doesn't talk about... Um, let's just talk about normal Judaism and Christianity. Let's see what the Bible says about homosexuality. <laughs> Leviticus chapter 20 verse 13 If a man lies with a man as one lies with a woman Both of them have done what is detestable They must be put to death Their blood will be on their own heads So again, if he's claiming um, We're in Islam um, If a homosexual is uh, punished by death That's immoral But his own book teaches it Is he claiming his own God is immoral? What is this guy saying? Or does he just have double standards and hypocrisy? Um Let's keep listening to what he has to say because remember he says his political ideology and his theology doesn't contradict itself. Uh, so should Dave Rubin and this guy be worried about radical Christians and radical Jews who want to implement that? I'm just saying if we're going off by his logic. Let's keep listening to what he has to say because it seems like to me he's just picking on one religion. Right? You're a Christian. I'd be worried too. No, I mean, trust me. I'm on that program. Okay? <laughs> they, they want us both dead, my friend. Yeah. Uh, he's claiming that uh, Muslims want Christians dead. Uh, I really feel bad for him. I feel bad for Charlie Kirk and Dave Rubin. Look what Islamophobia has done to these two poor, brainwashed, uh, uneducated uh, commentators. I'm just going to put it that way because um, all, uh, under, if you look at it, you can't go and kill innocent people in Islam. And if you look at uh, Islamic law, Christians are allowed to live under uh, an Islamic land. So what is this guy? What is he talking about? But let's keep listening to what he has to say. Right. I mean, they, and that's something I find to be 
horribly inconsistent with the left as they try to be the champions of all these minority groups and all these supposed oppressed groups yet here they are kind of joining forces with countries and movements and you know theocratic fascists in the middle uh again this guy is building a straw man for example there are people on the left they don't agree with the ideology of islam but they try to be respectful to muslims again i'm not saying all left-wingers are respectful to muslims uh but anyway just because people on the left are anti-war, they're against the Iraq war and stuff, that doesn't mean they're teaming up with Muslims or these governments in the Middle East uh, that don't even follow Islam. Like, they don't even have Islamic law in their country. They have weird rules and stuff. But again, let's keep listening to what he has to say. He's just using straw mans. East ...that give homosexuals flying lessons on the top of buildings. Again, Leviticus chapter 20 verse 13. The punishment for homosexuality in the Bible is death. It's capital punishment according to his scripture. <laughs> All right. And there you go. Uh, let's take a look at the next clip. Why are they not demonstrating widespread, widespread protests against how women are treated in Saudi Arabia? But the International Feminist Society is protesting for against Israel. Yeah. It's weird, right? Yeah. It's like because intersectionality, it's like they have this weird construct that we must advocate against Israel because Israel is a friend of America and America hates women. It's like this weird, like, yes, web yes, that America hates women. I, I, I need, yeah. like, this big map, like, where they kind of try. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and now he does another straw man uh, where he says people uh, don't protest against uh, or feminists don't protest against uh, Saudi Arabia and stuff. If you look at feminist marches, they go in, they speak out against Islam and stuff, they do it all the time here in the United States. You have people on the left wing who are Zionists like Bill Maher, all they do is talk about bad about Islam. You have people like Sam Harris who claim to be uh, liberal or something like that. All they do is bad mouth and lie about Islam. So what is he talking about? And then he builds a straw man saying, oh, uh, people hate Israel because they're America's friend and all this stuff, nope. The reason people protest against Israel is because they're killing innocent men, women, and children. They're committing war crimes. They use chemical weapons. They commit war crimes. Uh, they oppress people. And the list goes on and on and on. That's why people are protesting Israel. And again, we see his true Zionistic Islamophobic colors showing he's building straw mans. Let's listen to, uh, let's take a look. And let me see if there's even a next clip real quick. If there is, take a look at this clip. But she critiques Israel for the settlements, yeah. right? So I think there's... Okay, that was a quick clip. You saw him saying uh, when he said settlements, he did this. He's like, she critiques Israel for their settlements. He's insinuating there is no settlements, even though uh, uh, Israel, is, uh, their government is uh, occupying Palestinian lands and stuff, and they're building illegal settlements. Hint, the BDS movement. And again, um, Dave Rubin, someone who claims... Uh, he believes in the free marketplace of ideas and he has these um he's being paid by the coach brother coach brothers and um you see him bringing in these zionist guests and stuff well you know what's ironic these people who claim they're for free speech and stuff they aren't um you see when palestinian activists goes on college campuses like these people they like to be involved in college campuses they like to shut down palestinian activists and not let them talk or cancel their events so again, reflect upon this. I've exposed their double standards and hypocrisy, and they don't like it. Because if they're gonna if they're gonna lie, and especially they're gonna lie about Islam, I'm gonna expose them because that's not cool. <coughs> Let's take a look at the next clip. Right, and then what? What country do they hate the most? Of course, it's Israel. Where, Which, they treat where, gays, where, where gays are open, you know, are yeah. openly productive members of society. I think they can marry in Israel. I'm not yeah. sure, but I, 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 the West. Has so here we go. Remember earlier how he said he his political and theological worldview doesn't contradict? Listen to what he has to say. It clearly contradicts. Right. And then what, what country do they hate the most? Of course, it's Israel where they where, where, gays, where gays are open, you know, are yeah. openly productive members of society. Okay, we see by Leviticus chapter 20 verse 13, homosexuality should not be allowed in its capital punishment. So remember, he said his theological view and his um political view don't contradict each other it clearly does that states it there and he's claiming that uh people hate israel the most or something like that just because you're anti-israel that doesn't mean um you hate that country the most 
what you're doing is when you boycott them is you want them to stop oppressing Palestinians and murdering them and committing war crimes and stealing from innocent people as well as also uh, uh, you're, you're siding with the oppressed and not the oppressors so he's building straw man I'm gonna end the video here reflect upon this and remember to always side with the oppressed and not the oppressors regardless of race religion gender ethnicity and etc peace